Hi there, welcome to the second part of the video. I've got the final answer uh, after popping it into my calculator. 0 0.67 meters is what you should have got. Okay, so uh, next question. Question three. So there are some more calculations coming up, a lot of numbers in there. I've bugged the most important ones. We've got a power, that's shown by the watts. We've got a total energy. I've done that capital E and a T for total energy. And we've got some useful energy, which I've labelled capital E with a V. The rest is wasted. So it wants you to calculate the energy wasted. It's quite a simple calculation. I'm just do 600 minus 450 to give 150 joules. That is the answer. Like that in there as well, 150 joules. What happens to the energy wasted from the light bulb? This is just a phrase that you need to know. It's transferred to the thermal energy store. of the surroundings. Transfer to the thermal energy store of the surroundings, lovely. Okay, so it wants you to calculate the efficiency of this light bulb. The efficiency calculation is efficiency equals useful energy divided by total energy. We said at the top that our useful was 450 joules and that the total was 600 joules. So 450 divided by 600 is going to give you 0 0.75. Doesn't need any units because it's an efficiency. So you're doing a joule divided by a joule. Gets rid of both. Okay. You then need to use the power equation for this. I haven't bugged. I'll just go quickly and do that. You've got an energy, uh, which is the same as work done, energy transferred. You've got a power here, and it wants to know the period of time. It wants to know T. So pop that into your equation. Power equals work done divided by time. 30 equals 600 divided by T. You flip that and that. Do a little flip. T equals 600, 5 by 30, equals 20 seconds. 20 seconds is your answer. Lovely. Okay, 3B. 3B part 1. A company is making some light bulbs, and there's a lot of information about the light bulbs there. Now, this information needs to be done by someone else other than the company, right? Because if the company does its own research and obviously it's going to make it as sound as good as it can so it can sell as many as possible so why is it important to do this independently so have another person or another organization do it is to avoid bias or worse to that effect 3b part 2 now it wants you to suggest reasons why a homeowner is more likely to choose the LED bulbs. So let's just have another quick look at this table. See the LEDs, they are less powerful, but they have a much greater lifetime. Now, they're more expensive, but this lifetime makes up for that. I'm going to show you how. So, yes, they're less powerful, but using less power is good because it keeps costs down keeps costs down and then you can say that it lasts longer as well I've done a little calculation down here and I'm just going to talk you through it so You've got 50,000 
hours for an LED bulb compared to 1,250 hours here. So you can work out how much longer it lasts for. If you do 50,000 divided by 1,250, you get 40. Right? So it takes 40 filament bulbs. For one LED in terms of lifetime, right? So one LED might cost sixteen pounds, but you're going to have to have forty filament bulbs. So forty times two pounds, which is what they cost, that's going to cost you eighty pounds. So it's a lot more expensive in the long run, and it's going to cost you more on the electricity bill as well. I want to know another factor down here. Uh, the availability is a big factor, so you know how easy is it to get the bulbs. You can also think about the colour output. Some people don't like the colour of LEDs. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Colour output and the temperature they heat up to as well. <coughs> So, um, any two of those. <coughs> okay, last question, and then I can go and blow my nose. Question four. Okay, so first one should be pretty straightforward. I mean, everyone knows what an ammeter does. It measures current. You then need to use V equals IR here. It's important that you convert your units. So you want to know the resistance. We know the potential difference is 4.2 volts. The current is given in milliamps. So you need to convert this by dividing by 1,000. Dividing this by 1,000 gives you 0 0.0035 amps. Put that into the equation V equals IR and say that 4.2 equals 0 0.0035 times R. So R equals 4.2 divided by 0 0.0035. That gives you 1200 ohms. If you got 1.2 ohms, you get 2 marks. But obviously, that isn't correct. Okay, it wants you to calculate the charge, it gives you a time and a current. You need to know the equation Q equals I times T. So charge, we don't know. Units is coulombs. I is the same as before, 0 0.0035 amps. T, you need to convert from 5 minutes, so times that by 60 into seconds and that is going to give you 5 times 60 300 seconds and then pop that into the equation 0 0.0035 times 300 and you get 1.05 coulombs that's your answer okay nearly there so, with a thermistor, you need to know that as temperature increases, resistance decreases. So it's like opposites. And you need to get a link here. So, it wants to know what happens when the temperature decreases. So, for a thermistor, if the temperature decreases, resistance is the opposite, it's going to increase. So that's your first mark. If temperature decreases, resistance increases. Then, if resistance increase is potential difference is going to increase as well. You know this because you need to know these rules. You need to know that resistance is proportional to potential difference. And for a thermistor, you need to know 
that temperature is inversely proportional to resistance. And then the last question he wants to draw an LDR, that is the symbol for an LDR. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice evening.